Peace and love, black family. It's the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, the black community's number one school psychologist and Pan-African organizer. I'm here at the Lamone Owen College in Memphis, Tennessee, 807 Walker Ave, supporting our historically black colleges and universities. I want to give a shout out to the Mike Magazine. The Mike Magazine, Sister Angela and the Mike Magazine. Please support the magazine. Independent black information, independent black journalist. She's a sister, so make sure you support her. Get all that information you need, revolutionary as well as contemporary and neighborhood on the Mike Magazine. Dr. Umar Johnson, ride or die. Thank the good brothers and sisters at the local masjid for bringing me out, flying me out for oh. the opportunity to be here. Okay, and for those who don't know you, give us a brief history of who you are as far as an author and um, clinical psychologist. And this is your birthday for your first book, so woohoo! Yes, indeed. I am a doctor of clinical psychology. I'm a certified school psychologist by trade. I'm also author of the Psychoacademic Holocaust, Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys, the first book ever written by an African-American male school psychologist teaching black parents in America how to fight back against special ed and ADHD and when although special ed has been around for 40 years this is the first book teaching our community how to fight back okay briefly um, I have a few questions for you here Dr. Umar uh, won't be before you long uh, how is it that you can protect your unconscious mind and do you think or suggest a media media fast if there is even a, anything that exists like a media fast? Well, I think those two questions go together. Mm -hmm. A media fast or an information fast is the way you protect the unconscious mind. Okay. You cannot turn the mind off. It's very important that we understand that. The mind is always on. Even when you're sleeping, the mind is on. The mind is on from the second of conception until the day of death. So that means if you cannot turn it off, you have to control what you allow to go into. Information, images, sound. Okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Information, images, sound. You have to control that information because no matter how intelligent we think we are, we are still likely to succumb to the influence of the mind based on how much misinformation goes in there. Just like a person cannot resist the effects of their social group, mm -hmm. the mind cannot resist the effects that come from not being able to keep it protected from misinformation. Okay, switching up here just a bit. Now in the past, we have had several black leaders assassinated. And my question to you is, in 2014, is it necessary for us to have a black leader? I don't think we need independent black leaders. What we need is leadership. We need a process and a system that trains leaders and holds them accountable and protects them and also replaces them in the event of assassination or illness. So no, we don't need individual leaders. Mm -hmm. We need leadership, okay. a leadership system okay. where you have multiple leaders working together under the accountability of the community. Okay, staying on the same path as leadership, Chokwe Lumumba, uh, speak a little bit about his leadership and role uh, as mayor of Jackson and uh, what do you think is going to happen since he's gone? Just well, briefly. Until know. his passing, I considered our ancestor, Mayor Attorney Chukwe Lamuma to be the best example of an elder scholar warrior that we had. Oh, wow. He was a legal scholar, but he was also an activist in the community who tried to get things done. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of our elders who are in the conscious community now, all they want to do is teach. They just teach, but they're not transforming anything and they're not building anything. Okay. So for me, Chukwe Lamuma was the best example we had and a very good one of what an elder scholar leader or organizer is supposed to be doing and that is transforming the community not simply giving out information. Do you consider yourself to be a leader? I consider myself to be an organizer. Mm -hmm. I'm very careful with the term leader because leaders should properly be chosen by the people they lead but because the African and African American community is so disorganized mm -hmm. the leaders choose themselves and then force themselves on the people. So I don't like to call myself a leader because I've never been chosen. A leader 
who has not been chosen is a dictator, oh. not a leader. All right, and diamonds. Um, I know how you feel about uh, blood diamonds, you know, but they say diamonds are a girl's best friend. What's your take on diamonds? Well, the question is how did diamonds become the girl's best friend? Mm -hmm. There was a propaganda campaign by the De Beers company, the Oppenheimers, which originally grew out of the Cecil John Rhodes uh, domination, extermination, and exploitation of the South African gold mines. Okay. And it was the Oppenheimer De Beers family that put together the propaganda campaign and advertising campaign to sell diamonds to women, conceptualizing them as the quintessential mate of romance and love and marriage and companionship. So the diamond is only the woman's best friend because of European propaganda. Okay. And what's in your tape deck? Just switching it up and we're going to wrap it up because I know you're really, really busy and people are waiting for you to go on and lecture to them. You have some great information that you want to give the people. Uh, what's in your tape deck? I know people don't have tapes anymore, your CDs, well, MP3. CDs, what do you like to listen to? What is in there to? right now? Uh -huh. I'm going to be straight honest. <laughs> I have the best of Bob Marley. I have the best of Jagged Edge. Ooh. John Legend, Anthony Hamilton. Naughty by Nature. Amazing. Tupac Shakur. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got some mainstream stuff in there as well, but I'm an oldies guy. Uh -huh. uh, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, the Jackson 5. I tend to like old music, not current music. Okay, now let me ask you your epitaph. We're not looking for you to go anywhere anytime soon, but what is it that you would like for your epitaph to read? Sincere. Committed. Compromising institution builder. Where can we find you, Dr. Umar? You can find me on the website, drumarjohnson.com. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and WhatsApp at Dr. Umar Johnson. You can find me by email, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com. You can find me by telephone, 215 989 Or you can find me on Facebook under my African last name. That's Dr. Umar Ifatunde. I F A T U N D E. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. ...of underpaid teachers. The war is not the result of old textbooks. The war is not the result of schools that have fallen out of disrepair. The miseducation machine that is operating against all African children, but particularly our boys, is by design and deliberate intent. It's important for you to understand that. Because too many of you are engaging in conversations that suggest the reason why our young people, our young men, are not being successful in school is because they don't value education. Some of you are falling for the argument that says the reason only one out of every four African American boys graduates from high school in America is because of rap music. Some of you are falling for the propaganda that says the reason the test scores are low is because they come from single parent homes. Well, guess what? What about the boys who come from two parent homes? What about the African American boys where the mother is a doctor and the father is a lawyer? What about the ones who do their homework? What about the ones who come to school every day? I'm telling you that the war operates irrespective of poverty, irrespective of single motherhood, irrespective of whether or not his pants are sagging, and irrespective of whether or not he listens to hip hop. My goal for this first presentation is to convince everyone in here that there's two things we need to do to save ourselves. One is we're gonna to have to build independent schools for our children. We have to do it. Obama's not gonna do it. Obama won't even admit there's black people in America. <laughs> the State Department of Education of Tennessee isn't going to do it. The local school board of Memphis isn't going to do it. And why aren't they going to do it? Because this one simple thing that every school district in Memphis could do that would break the back of the miseducation machine. One simple thing. What is it? Give every African-American boy an African-American male teacher. You cut special ed in half overnight. You cut school dropout in half overnight. You cut so-called, so-called, so-called ADHD in half overnight. 
You eliminate Ritalin prescriptions, Adderall prescriptions, Concerta prescriptions, and Meditate prescriptions overnight. You increase high school diplomas overnight. You cut gangs off overnight just by giving every black boy a teacher who is of the same gender and the same race as he. So why don't they do that? Because education in America, public, private, parochial, or charter, is the queen dome of the middle class white female. That's her industry. That's her agency. That's her institution. And if you're going to give black boys a black male teacher, you're going to have to lay off thousands of privileged white women. America's never going to let that happen. Why? Because this social order, which was controlled by the racism before Obama, and will be controlled by even more racism after, is never going to inconvenience a white person for the benefit of an African. If you don't understand white supremacy, nothing else you study, read, watch, or experience will make any sense. Some of you are still ideologically tripping over the Michael Dunn case. Some of you are still intellectually masturbating over Zimmerman's acquittal. <laughs> it makes no sense to you because you're looking at it through the lens of common sense. <laughs> white supremacy isn't ran on common sense. White supremacy is ran on white privilege and power. And only if you look at it through that lens will it make any sense to you. So now, the American social order has created, give me that next slide, Queen. She might have stepped, oh, she back there. Here we go. The American social order has created a five-stage rite of passage for every black boy in this country. For my brothers in the audience, some of you may have escaped this rite of passage. Many of us did not. We fell victim at one level or another. Rites of passage. We talk about needing a rites of passage for black boys. Many of our communities, our boys don't have a rites of passage. But white supremacy has one. What is their rite of passage for black boys? I need to add a sixth step. I've decided to separate special education from miseducation. Because the world of special ed is so big, it can't be housed under miseducation alone. Also, many of you will think because you are not special educated or your child was not special educated that you somehow escaped it. So the first stage is miseducation. What is this? This means from preschool to third grade, we're going to deliberately undereducate and miseducate the black boy. On purpose. Some say, Dr. Johnson, that's a bit extreme. How can you say that teachers would dare deprive a baby of an adequate education? Well, why don't you read the United States Department of Education's report on school suspension and expulsion that came out nearly two years ago that said black boys in preschool, preschool, you do know what preschool is. That's three, four, and five. And black boys in kindergarten. That's five and six. And black boys in the first grade. That's five, six, and seven. Broke a record in the United States for having the highest suspension and expulsion rate in the country. Let me ask you a question. What in the hell can a five-year-old do? <laughs> to be put out of school for the rest of his childhood. Right. What can a preschooler do? To be put out of school for the rest of his childhood. What can a first grader do? To be put out of school for the rest of his education. So you don't have to believe me. Look at the statistics. They miseducate him from pre-K to third. And then they pull out special education Fourth grade to seventh. <laughs> now I'm a school psychologist. One of the few black male school psychologists in the country. I am the gatekeeper of special ed. That's what we're called. 
Because we decide who goes in, who stays in, and who comes out. 